What is up, Kansas FCA College Huddle Leaders? My name is Kelly Thorne, and I am excited to be able to be your College Huddle Leader Coordinator for uh, the weekend of uh, September 27th through 28th, our fall conference. Cannot wait to see you, to meet a lot of you. About 80-85% of you are new, so that's super exciting, and excited to have you guys with us the next four years throughout your college career. If you do not have your playbook in front of you, now is the time to be able to do that. I sent it to you in an email, so pull it up. Uh, you can print it off. You can have it in front of you on your computer, whatever you need to do. You will need to take notes. That way you're prepared to be able to lead your kids and be the best huddle leader that you can be uh, for the group of athletes that you're going to be working with. Go ahead and pull it up right now. We're going to go to page one. If you can just, and I'm going to have my computer off to the side here, so I apologize if I lean over a little bit, but um, that way I can see um, what we're doing um, and what I need to talk to you guys about. Page one is just our schedule. A lot of you guys that have been a college huddle leader for a long time know this, uh, but those who are new, that's our camp schedule, so you guys can know what is going on, what to prepare for, um, and what we expect from you guys. Let's go ahead and skip ahead to, uh, to uh, page... We're going to go to page four, Huddle Leader One. We are very specific with our curriculum and how we approach camp, and we are excited about that, and it's very intentional. So your lesson one for this uh, conference that you're going to be leading with your kids is about creation, that we have a creator, um, that we are designed for God's purpose, um, and and that's it. There's not a lot more. Um, there's nothing less. It's just about creation, and we do that um, for specific reasons. So you might want to add to this. You might want to talk about other things. We're asking you really to not to, to really just pour in to um, the creation talk. And so if you flip over to page four, our theme for this year, first off, is all in. And you can um, kind of see that right off the bat. It talks about all in, gives um, a reason for why we're doing it. So let's just go ahead and read um, and skim through this lesson. And as I'm reading, um, I'll talk about some stuff that we are going to ask you guys to do with your huddle, and then also what more of the things mean. So all in, that simple two-word phrase is the battle cry of all athletes that are willing to go do whatever it takes to achieve greatness. So a lot of you guys that have been athletes, no sports, or maybe you are a music person um, and you want first chair, uh, you know, in the band or the choir, um, or the orchestra, or whatever it is, you know um, what it takes to be able to be all in. And that's what God did for us. He went all in when he created us. And as you go through this, through the warm-up and everything else, it's going to kind of lead you into that direction. That God went all in as the creator of us um, for us. And so go ahead and flip the page to page 5. It talks about Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, we thought this was an interesting illustration. And one of the things that we do is we have a lot of kids that come that are athletes, but we do have a few that are that are not um, in sports. And so we kind of try to make sure we have a few non-sport stories um, in our um, Huddle Leader Playbook in order to relate with the kids. So uh, those of you guys who know Alexander Graham Bell, he invented the telephone. And so it kind of gives a story about that and what he did um, in his life and uh why he did that. He's a testimony. Um, both his mother and his wife were deaf. So that just kind of like, he tried to find a reason and a solution, and that inspired him to go all in when he created um, the telephone. So you go down to the Bible study, it says in Genesis 1, read about how God went all in as the creator over the course of six days. And then it gives a list of the six days of creation. And it says, but even after putting every ounce of his divine creativity into planet Earth, God saved his most prized creation for last. Well, you can guess what that is, right? Okay, yeah, that's us. And so we are um, the most prized creation that God created. And then it goes into the questions. And when you're going into these questions with your kids, you can either go around the room, you can have them raise your hands, you can have them divide up into groups. And say, hey, you two take question one, you two qu take question three. However you want to do it, get creative. You can switch it up every huddle and uh, 
just use several different um, ideas to be able to answer these questions. And you'll want to answer them as a group. So if you split into groups of two or three or whatever, still ask questions and so that they can all write the answers down together. So that's page five. Going down to page six, overtime. Oh, you'll want to read at the top of page six. It has some passages and some verses to read. You guys want to go through that. So the overtime is what is a common theme in all these scriptures? Have you ever stepped foot on a mountain, beach, or prairie land and skip a and stop and wonder if you were the first person to step foot on it? I thought that was an interesting question. I know I've been several places where I'm like, I wonder if I'm the first person that stepped foot on this, you know, side of the mountain or uh, part of the Grand Canyon or or whatever it is. You know, it could be a beach, it could be a cow pasture for all Kansas people, huh? Yeah, some of you know what I'm talking about. All right, did you, um, and then the third question, do you realize there is no one else that ha there is no one else or never has been anyone else exactly like you? And that helps them just identify with their self, help them to make them feel special. Like, you are the only one on this earth. God created you, no one else like you, and, and that's a pretty special thing. So, you know, you, you'll want to go on and be like, you know, you know, and then God sent his son, Jesus, and all this, and he, you know, he died on the cross to save our sins. I want you to just hold off for a minute on that. If kids start asking questions, just say, hey, you know what? That's a great question, and we're going to get there in lesson two and three, or lesson three and four, whatever it's going to be, so that they know that, hey, it's coming, okay? So the first lesson, what is it about? That's right. It's just about creation. If kids start asking um, questions and stuff like that, try to filter them around um, the story of creation. If they want to go off topic and move forward and kind of jump ahead, say, hey, you know what? It's coming. We're going to get there. So no pressure on you to keep going forward with that. Um, if they start asking questions, just um, say it's going to be a fun rest of the weekend. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to, to Huddle 2. And if you guys have more questions about Huddle 1, we are going to have uh, our leadership team um, there Friday night early uh, during registration to answer your guys' questions. So they will get asked. So write them down if you have a question, and that way we can, you know, we can catch up with you when it comes to uh, Friday night. All right, I'm going to flip the page. Huddle 2. Okay, Huddle 2 is labeled The World is All In, and it's about sin. And our sin is dirty, and it's not good, and... And we all sin. We all know that. So let's start off with the first paragraph. It doesn't matter what level of greatness an athlete achieves. There is no such thing as perfection. It is impossible to win every championship or break every record. And even if an athlete reaches the pinnacle of success, it never lasts. Everyone is bound to eventually fall short. So, you know, the story of sin, like you can even in get... That can relate to so many things in life. And this is a great example. Like, you can be the best basketball team or have the best football team, have a completely, um, you know, winning season. But eventually, eventually, you're going to fall short. I know there's a high school football team that had won 15 years in a row. I know ESPN just recently did a story about them. 15 years in a row without a loss. But eventually they did lose. And... Um, what a great reminder um, that is of the gospel and uh, how we're all sinners. And we could think that we're the most perfect person on the planet, but, um, you know, we all sin. So so that's kind of the the, the, the beginning par paragraph, the warm-up. Find an open space. Mark, and, mark a starting point um, with whatever object you can find. Walk off 30 feet and put another marker at that point. Um, this distance is just a few inches beyond the world's longest jump record of 29 feet, 4.5 inches. Holy cow, that's a long jump. Could you imagine jumping that far? And then it goes to say, have each member of your group attempt a long jump. Keep track of who jumps the farthest. And so that, that exercise to kind of jump to walk you through like who did the best and who possibly did the worst. And it's going to show you and it's going to illustrate some of that. Um, and there's more um, explanation on that as you go around. Go over to page 8 for the workout. Um, 
says, from the time sports became a national pastime, breaking the rules has been a commonplace among executive coaches and athletes. For instance, and it goes in to talk about the Chicago White Sox, how they placed bets on the game to intentionally lose and uh, so that they could win more money. Um, kind of some shady things. There's a lot of shady things going on with the NFL right now. And just if you guys are watching ESPN, all kinds of different things. So um, that will probably be able to relate to um, the students very well. And then the questions, have you ever had to deal with a teammate or a competitor who was cheating in order to gain an advantage? And all these questions are doing is just to be able to allow them to open up, to be able to, um, it's going to help them open up with not only what's going on in their personal life, but um, just open up as they grow in the gospel um, and in his word. And you'll see the steady progress throughout the weekend. So what is the first lesson, second lesson about? It's about sin. Okay, at this point on, you're going to want to go into more details about, oh, but it's okay if we sin because God, you know, he came to save us, which is true, and that's wonderful, and that's the beauty of the gospel. But right now, we're going to do like a little cliffhanger, okay? So, I know it's going to be hard, um, but your second lesson, you're just talking about sin, that we're sinners. And um, you're pretty much going to leave it at that. And so they're like, oh, man, um, you know, I'm a sinner. You know, the answer to uh, if I sin, I'm going to hell, which they, that's okay for them to think about it a little bit, Okay. And I know it's hard because we all know the gospel message that God came to save. But um, at the same time, it's really good for these kids just to stop and be able to think. Now, it's only a matter of a couple hours that we leave this cliffhanger going on. Uh, we got this idea from a Young Life camp that I attended several years back, probably about 10 years ago. And they do this actually with their kids every summer, every year. Um, and it's very effective um, to be them being able to understand the gospel message. So... First lesson was creation, second lesson was sin. And as you finish out lesson two, again, some of your kids are gonna have questions and, and, and you might wanna to add to that, but just a reminder to say, hey, hang in there, we'll get there. And those questions will be answered in our, 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 our future lessons. So um, pretty exciting stuff. Um, we're gonna go to page, I believe it's 16. page 16. Okay, so here's what we do. First lesson is on creation. Second lesson is on sin. Okay, then the speaker comes in and he, that's Friday night, so if you kind of look at your schedule, this is going to help you follow it. So you have huddle study one is about creation. Huddle study two is about sin. And then after that, you have the main speaker. And he gives the salvation message. And it's awesome. And you'll see kids making decisions and rededications and first-time commitments and asking for prayer. And it's a power, powerful, powerful night. So there's only a couple hours difference between the time we tell them about that they're sinners and not really give them an answer for a solution to that. And then from the time they hear the gospel message. So pretty exciting stuff. Um, so then, you know, what do you do after that? So we have creation, sin, gospel message. Then the next morning, they're getting ready to go home, all right? So we need to empower them to be um, just on fire for the Lord and be able to share Christ and just live a life full of the love of, of, love of Christ. We all understand that's not going to mean that we don't have any hardships in life, but that we can keep on going and just... Uh, really encourage them to live their life for the Lord. Okay, so you're on page 16. Hope you've had enough time to flip there. And I'm just going to read through kind of a little bit. Um, let's just go straight to the workout. And it says, Going all in for God sometimes requires intense sacrifices, including fame and the approval of others. Eric Little's life is such an example. And it talks about how he was an Olympic sprinter and he took a Sunday off. And uh, he didn't end up running that um, last race in the Olympics. And it's just kind of a crazy story because he wanted to go to church. 
Um, and and uh, so go ahead and read that story, and I think you'll be pretty moved by it. But that guy was willing to give up such a powerful um, example um, of, of living your life for the Lord. And it goes on to page 17, and it just asks questions about that. But go to the Bible story where it says, where it comes to be an all-in, there are both the bad and good examples in the Bible. The first example is in the book of Acts and deals with a couple named Ananias and Sapphira. Early church had certain rules of conduct, including sharing possessions. This couple sold a piece of property and was supposed to give the money to the church. And then we all know how that works out, right? How's that work out? Got the answer? Okay, we'll keep reading. However, Ananias decided to keep some money back for himself, succumbing to the temptation of wealth. Sapphira er, knew that the actions of her husband and lied about it to the disciples. For their sins, Ananias and Sapphira died on the spot where they lied. It's pretty brutal punishment, but, you know, the, the answer to sin is death, but we have the gospel message, which is encouraging. So, that was an example that Jesus used um, throughout, and he used several examples, but that was just one of them, about what it's going to take to be all in. All in for the Lord, all in for Christ. Um, he doesn't want just a you know, he just doesn't want us on Fridays or Saturdays or Sundays. And I know you guys know this, but this is how you guys need to talk to your kids and just explain to him that he wants you, your whole heart, he wants your whole mind, he wants your whole body and soul. And um, we are called to live a life um, for the gospel. Let's go to 18. Let's go to overtime. In those stories, it gives a couple more examples. We read about someone who was a sellout and someone who was sold out. Ananias and Sapphira were deceitful, but Paul was willing to give up everything, even of his life, to fulfill a divine purpose. And it gives um, more examples of like the sold out Christian versus the sell out Christian and kind of what those look like. So go through those with your kids. Um, go to page 19. Um, and then it just gives up some wrap up questions. What, what are some things that um, that you're holding back on as an athlete and um, what do you need to do to be sold out in your relationship with God and talks about God has a great purpose for your life and uh, we can live a life um, for the glory of God so that kind of wraps up our playbook time uh, it's super exciting what they uh, what journey you will be on with your kids throughout this weekend as you get intimate with them and close to them um, through the Word of God and just through building relationships with them. Every year they they come back and they're like, hey, you know, I don't remember who the speaker is, but I remember my college huddle leader. I was talking to somebody the other day. They remembered their college huddle leader from 1972. They remembered him. And so that's pretty encouraging. I remember my college huddle leaders, and I'm getting kind of old, so... Uh, Make an impact with your kids. What I do want you to do is, in order for us to check to make sure everybody's read and listened to this video, I want you to email me um, just a note that says, and you can even just put it in the subject line, that says, watch the video. And that's all you have to do. And so, uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. Remember, new huddle leaders need to be there at 515 for registration and for new huddle leader training. And those who have been to two or more conferences can come after that at 6 o'clock to get registered. So excited. Please be praying. Continue to ask you to read through the book of John, as I sent that out um, just a few, uh, few or last week or a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't read through the book of John, we are asking that you do that in order to prepare uh, for uh, this weekend. So uh, come ready, come excited. For those of you who've been before, Friday night is going to look totally different and we are pumped about that and we feel like God's just leading us in a different direction so be open-minded everybody needs to wear sports clothes Friday night okay wear your tennis shoes wear your sports clothes and uh, if it's cold out uh, bring bring a jacket all right guys thank you so much if you guys need anything at all you can email me at kthorn at fca.org talk to you later